Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today we are going to talk about <laughs> the Sia film. Yes, we're going to talk about it. <sighs> so, of the people who responded to my poll on my community tab, about 70% of you wanted this video, so I apologize to the 30% of you who did not care, but here we are. Before we get started, if you're going to bother listening, watching, whatever else to this video and you are a fan of Sia or whatever or you're just like really into this conversation this is not a hate video so don't be coming up here just being like y'all are just hating blah, blah. I don't want to hear that I'll probably hear it because people love to just see a video click and then start commenting without actually listening to anything and it's really annoying so for those of you who aren't aware there's quite a bit of controversy surrounding a movie that's supposed to be coming out it is called music and it is done by a popular music artist named Sia starring in one of the leading roles or main character roles is a young woman named Maddie Ziegler apparently she's quite famous and she rose to fame through her time on Dance Moms as one of the child dancers from my understanding. The role that Maddie Ziegler plays is that of an autistic girl who unexpectedly ends up in the care of her half-sister. So as part of research for this video I went beyond just watching the initial trailer and yes there's a whole lot of things that went down on Twitter and we'll get into that but I also watched an interview she did with I believe it was Variety and it was one of those zoom remote video interview type things and I think it revealed a lot about Sia herself and the movie. I feel like a lot of my perspective shifted because I gained a better understanding of who Sia is and probably where a lot of this stuff is coming from. So in that interview, Sia states that the character music is considered to be quite low functioning. Those were her words. She has echolalia and Sia actually explained pretty well what music specific echolalia would be and what that means. So I thought that was pretty neat. She was saying that she's able to repeat words as part of communication but does not provide her own speech. The interviewer had asked about this specifically because I guess they got to watch the movie beforehand and they didn't feel that it was really made clear. Music's full diagnosis or situation or whatever and Sia said that she didn't really want to state it super explicitly at the time because she was scared of offending people and yet here we are. Now in the section where Sia talks about the functioning level or maybe describing the way that music is portrayed she says all people on the spectrum are very different. She kind of said basically the whole like if you meet one person on the spectrum you've met one person on the autism spectrum. So I did appreciate that clearly there is at least some understanding here. So Maddie Ziegler, the person playing that character, is not autistic. I don't know if she's neurodivergent, neurotypical, blah blah blah. I don't know anything else about that. I just know that she's not autistic. And apparently when she found out that she was going to be having this role, she came to Sia on the first day crying and saying she really didn't want people to think that she was making fun of them. Sia's response was instead to take this seriously and be like, well, maybe people might think that this was making fun somehow. She said, oh no, honey, we won't let that happen. I won't let that happen. And I think a lot of this actually stems from this relationship between Sia and Ziegler, and we'll get into it here in a minute. But Maddie did prepare she said, for the role by basically looking up autism documentaries and looking for videos of autistic children that their parents had posted of their episodes. So I don't know specifically what she means by that. It sounds like she's saying that she looked up videos of maybe like meltdowns. I'm not 100%. But basically that's how she went to do her research. It was more kind of like the parents and the officials perspectives and pretty much a characteristic public thing that happens all the time is a failure to really go to the autistic population themselves who are able to speak for themselves and able to communicate in some way for themselves to share things maybe share their stims in a maybe a more respectful way 
but I digress. Sia also mentions in this interview that they had sent the movie off to the Child Mind Institute and she says that Maddie's performance got a 100%. I, I don't really understand what that means. I guess basically they wanted to make sure that they were portraying autism correctly. They sent it to the Child Mind Institute and somehow her performance got 100%. I, again, I don't know what the scale is for that. I don't know if she actually literally got a percentage response. I don't know, but that's just what Sia had said. We're gonna go in real quick to something I think that's actually quite important to understand about this situation, and it's Sia's and Maddie Ziegler's weird relationship, and I I don't want to imply like anything like dark or sinister. I just think it's very unconventional. Apparently Sia had met Maddie when she was 11. Maddie was 11, not Sia. <laughs> and she felt like she needed to rescue her out of her stressful life or whatever. And I guess she ended up working on a project and it was a music video, I think, that went viral or something. And basically, Sia calls Maddie her full-time muse, which it's just kind of weird for a full-grown woman to be, like, really attached to, at the time, a child as her muse. I, I just find it a little weird, but that's just me. So basically, she has this thing where she feels like she has to, like, protect Maddie from, like, the industry or something. And she herself has said that she creates projects to keep Maddie safe. So <laughs> I think this is a lot of what's going on here. Now with this movie, again with this interview, she was basically saying she'd never really been a director-director, she'd been a singer, blah blah blah, this whole process. And so basically she came at this after some encouragement as basically recording a music video for like 40 or something days straight. Which really explains why it came across to me like a weird mashup of a music video and kind of a movie, which is apparently exactly what it is. It's actually a musical, which I did not realize, but I guess it makes sense. It's titled music and it's made by a <laughs> singer. Something I find kind of odd is when she was asked about how, you know, the story started, how all of this started, and again, this could be maybe Sia's interpretation of why she was being interviewed or maybe the context around the question, but she just very briefly mentioned that she kind of wrote down this little story and time went by and then the whole story about like, you should be a director, blah, 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 kind of happened. So it was kind of interesting, like she shifted away maybe like why she was inspired to write this story. Like, why is this movie a thing, you know? And that, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if you're really passionate about a story, I feel like it'd be more than like, this was just a little story and then like, then I wanted to do all these things and then Maddie's amazing. That's the impression this interview gave me. Sia specifically says that at the beginning of filming, she got everyone together kind of like in a group huddle and told them basically to leave their egos out. This was about good vibes and that it was for the autism slash autistic community. And I think that's probably where things start getting kind of muddy. I will note though that she has mentioned that Kate Hudson's character, which is the sister of music, is more a character very clear in her mind. So this character probably had a lot of more formulation in her mind maybe than the autistic character did. And also to note that this may be more through the lens or partially kind of mixing these worlds of that sister character and and music because I believe from the way the trailer looks is like we're kind of following music's sister, I forget the name of that character, through the process of suddenly basically becoming the caregiver of her half-sister. So again, this might be a situation where although a lot of this has to do with autism and autistic characters and apparently at one point called a love letter to autistic people and their caregivers and family, this also has maybe not, not the kind of representative attempt that maybe a lot of people want from a movie that includes someone as a main character who is autistic, especially with high support needs. Again, in this interview, I do see Sia making it very clear that she does want people to 
give respect, compassion, etc. to autistic people, especially those with higher support needs or who are non-speakers. She was making it very clear, like, the message of, you know, just because someone doesn't speak or they might seem different than you doesn't mean they don't understand you and you really shouldn't talk about people in front of them like they're not there. So she kind of went into that conversation, which I really appreciated and I believe she really sincerely wants to bring that particular message across. And then she kind of says that she's always had a thing for special needs and like that kind of stuff. When she said special needs, she corrected herself and said, well, special abilities. And she kind of like did this like happy like thing right here. And she's like, they don't call it special needs anymore. They call it special abilities. Like she legit believes that, like that's what you're supposed to say. And of course that got a lot of people mad. <laughs> but it was interesting because she was literally correcting her own language. Like somewhere along the line she learned this and legit like believed that that was the right way to go about it. She then goes on to kind of <laughs> just dig herself a bigger hole by saying that she wanted to make it more like the classic movies, more like Forrest Gump and Rain Man. And in fact, it says that her shorthand sell basically to explain the movie is Rain Man the musical, but with girls. And obviously a lot of the autistic community isn't super appreciative of Rain Man because they feel like it developed this very big stereotype. And so of course they're saying, well, it's just like Rain Man, but musical with girls. like. That didn't go well either. Now towards the end, the interviewer is talking about the character music as this wide-eyed, innocent character that just seems maybe unreal in this current world of dark awfulness and blah blah blah. And Sia goes on to be like, yeah, and really what you're seeing there is purity and all the people with special abilities that I have fallen in love with, they all have this purity in them and etc etc. Again, this was taken as infantilizing. Is that what it's? It's like the word infant infantilizing. I think it's infantilizing. Anyway, basically that's how a lot of people took that. But one thing that I did notice that Sia pushed a lot in this interview was how she wanted this to be a very feel-good movie. She wanted to, as she said, break your heart and put it back together again and give you a Hollywood ending. She wants this to be just good vibes and happy things. And I think that's really a lot of why the backlash that she's, I'm going to discuss, but that she got, really shook her and caused some terrible responses. It's very clear that this person is very eccentric and very kind of bubbly and kind of in her own little world. And yet then sometimes she says things that, where you're like, okay, well, you're grounded somewhere. Like you have a grounding, but there's lots of fantastical and imagination and bright colors. And like, that's how I feel Sia kind of oozes. What's kind of even sadder about this is that it looks like Sia really wants this to be like her defining thing. She's got more albums and music coming out, but she wanted this movie to be her thing. And this is the response she's getting. Another thing that some people have been kind of trying to add to this conversation, I'm going to mention because it is, again, a facet of the conversation, but uh, take this with a huge grain of salt, please. Now, with how eccentric Sia is, of course, a lot of people in Hollywood are just, they just are. Some people think maybe she's showing a lot of autistic traits herself. And so some people think she might be on the spectrum. However, I don't personally feel comfortable talking about whether or not someone is autistic that I don't know and they're a real person. We're not talking like about a character, we're talking about a real human being. So I'm not really comfortable speculating that, but for some people that is a part of like the lens and the conversation around this situation. Sia comes to the world, she's like, yes, everyone, like here's my like magnificent piece of good happiness, amazing vibes. I'm just gonna make everyone feel wonderful. I'm gonna just be like so awesome to the autism community and they're gonna love it. And they definitely didn't respond like that. <laughs> so of course, first off, people were mad that Maddie was the person playing music as she is not autistic. And frankly, <sighs> I feel bad because I know more about the situation now, but it's just how I felt when I saw 
the trailer, there are many scenes that they use that do look mocking. And I don't believe that Maddie intended that at all. I don't even think anyone on here intended that. In the interview where Sia had mentioned Maddie came to her about that, she told Maddie she could have final cut and take out anything she was uncomfortable with. So I really don't think anyone meant it this way. I just think that because she's not autistic and apparently just isn't... <sighs> Not to be rude, but like isn't at the acting skill where she can pretend that these things are natural to her. It looks unnatural to her and then on top of that kind of then looks mocking. It just does in some scenes. Some scenes look fine to me, but there's a little too many scenes used in that trailer where I'm like, ooh, that's, that doesn't look good. That, that's not a good look. So of course the autistic community, especially on Twitter, because where else, where else does the drama happen? Basically we're like, Sia, you're horrible. How could you? Why didn't you cast an autistic person? And so Sia begins to respond. I actually tried working with a beautiful young girl, nonverbal, on the spectrum, and she found it unpleasant and stressful, so that's why I cast Maddie. A lot of people were saying that she was lying about having ever had an autistic person playing the role because of the dynamic between Sia and Maddie and how Sia has said that she wrote a movie for Maddie in 2015 and Maddie had at another interview, I don't remember what year, pretty close to that, maybe 2016, she said she was going to be in a movie by Sia at the time titled Sister, which I'm gonna guess is this movie. <laughs> so a lot of people felt that she was lying, she wrote the part and everything for Maddie and I don't know, she could could have been not lying lying, I don't know. One person pointed out it's possible that she did actually go ahead and try casting an autistic person and when they didn't work out immediately put Maddie in that place because that's where her comfort zone is and of course everyone felt that this was not trying hard enough. Now thanks to the whole autistic actor comment and that not working out etc, one of the responses was this. Several autistic actors, myself included, responded to these tweets. We all said we could have acted in it on short notice. These excuses are just that, excuses. The fact of the matter is zero effort was made to include anyone who is actually autistic. Hashtag nothing about us without us. So then Sia responds, and I believe maybe more than to the Helen Angel person here on Twitter, just from the amount of ads going on for the replies here. So this might not be the full conversation, but this is definitely in part towards this person and the general conversation in that direction. Sia says, effing BS, you have no effing idea because you weren't there and haven't seen the movie. Maybe you're just a bad actor. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was that was not, um, that wasn't a good look. So that one got me a little riled up personally. Like just be like, <laughs> instead of, <laughs> instead of trying to maybe recast or accommodate uh, when faced with the fact that there are other autistic actors out there who were wanting to do this or whatever, <laughs> and then just be like, well, maybe you're a bad actor. Like, Ah, uh, let's not do that. That's not a good look. Let's not do that. This also really isn't helped by the fact that Sia has said specifically in the interview that I had watched that she cast a lot of the people literally from Twitter. <laughs> like she was on Twitter, asked people on Twitter that she saw or noticed and literally cast them in the movie from Twitter. And as you might know, Twitter has plenty of autistic people and autistic advocates specifically who would in a split second share that kind of news if she was looking to cast an autistic person. I'm sure there would be tons of people on Twitter happily trying to get themselves a part of the ability to like try out or whatever. Then another exchange goes on. Hi Sia, can I ask why you didn't cast a disabled actor for this part? It's pretty offensive the way you've chosen to portray this character. People with disabilities are not broken and don't need fixing. Many of my friends have different disabilities and they are some of the 
and it goes on to more tweets, but basically Sia responds, I agree, I've never referred to music as disabled. Special abilities is what I've always said and casting someone at her level of functioning was cruel, not kind, so I made the executive decision that we would do our best to lovingly represent the community. Yeah, so that one went really yikes. Again though, <laughs> someone somewhere planted the special abilities thing into Sia's brain. Yeah, that wasn't a good look. <laughs> People got kind of upset at that, obviously because of her avoidance of like disabled, etc. And at first I was personally very not happy with the concept of saying like it was cruel to cast someone at this functioning level, as she said. And I, upon reflection, like trying to be considerate of reality, I guess, I think what she's trying to say is someone who she imagines is similar, probably would not feel great going through a very grueling schedule trying to record a movie. However, casting someone autistic in general doesn't necessarily mean they have to have like the same support needs. So Again, I don't have a whole lot of knowledge about actors who have high support needs. I don't know. But I imagine just for myself, a part-time job is enough to, to, to make me need hours of rest. And it, sometimes it makes me feel really pathetic. And just imagining someone who constantly is going to need redirection and help with motor planning and help with, you know, all these things. I do see how that could be considered really cruel to someone to say like, okay, well, you know, keep up with this. However, there's also the concept of like, well, then accommodate, you know, like if you're going to make this movie about autistic people, especially one including a character who has height support needs, like, wouldn't you accommodate an autistic actor? Ah, it's a little messy there. I, I get that in a perfect world, she would have cast the original person made the best, you know, accommodations for them. And if that didn't work out, cast another one. And if that didn't work out, you know, cast another one who, you know, they, they didn't have to have the same functioning level or support needs level or whatever else to be authentically autistic. And I, I don't think that got through her head. However, I also realized that in reality, when she was saying like, this is like 40 days in a row filming, like you don't have time to sit here and look for people when she has a person she adores and thinks is like practically perfect and she may have made the movie for initially right there so i can understand why she made that decision i also know that like trying to put a movie on hold and the amount of money that goes into this kind of stuff is kind of insane so again on a more practical logistics maybe level I can see why this might be a little bit idealistic on the part of the autistic community and I would say if she honestly did initially have a non-speaking autistic person trying to act this role, I, I mean that's props to her for at least trying if that's what she honestly did. I think the trailer really kind of highlighted again some scenes where I don't think Maddie's acting was really genuine looking of an autistic person and didn't really capture that well. However, I do think that she captured Sia's vision. Again, like I said before, Sia appears to be a very idealistic person in this like, again, fantastical world is just like how she comes across to me. And because in her world, like, for example, Maddie is apparently like this wonderful muse to her and just like, woo, like this, woo, is, I don't know why, is how, I, how Sia comes across to me. I don't know if that makes any sense. And so in Sia's mind, I wonder, and this is like legit how I think this happened, if she sees that what she called purity, which a lot of times, yes, autistic people can experience a lot of naivety to, you know, bad intentions and stuff like that. Not to say that that's everyone and not to say that just because someone might be wide-eyed or something <laughs> means that they don't, you know, get complex thoughts and ideas or 
have bad intentions and understand them or whatever, but in her world, there's this purity or whatever innocence type of aspect. And so I think maybe what she was trying to do was insert her magical fantastical world that she has in her mind into the world of this character music and I think to her she thought that would be a natural continuance because in her mind I think she thinks <laughs> that people she sees that quality in see that magical world that she sees. Does that make any sense? I don't know but that is like legit how I feel about this so I think that Sia is on a different plane than everyone else is regarding this movie and I think that Maddie captured that. Maddie captured this magical world that Sia wanted for music if that makes sense. However obviously this can come across really offensive so. Another thing I wanted to note too was a lot of people getting angry about the character even being high support needs and non-speaking and I think, like, I get it. People want to have their moment where they're like, properly represent everyone on the autism spectrum, which by the way, I don't think you can do in one, <laughs> in one movie, uh, no matter how hard you try, honestly. That's like trying to say like, capture everyone. Like, that's just not how that works. That's not reality. I think it's also really kind of rude to be like, um, well, if you want to represent the autistic community, they have to be speaking and lower support needs. You know what I mean? Like, yes, make that, vo make that movie. Like, make a movie about someone like me. But why can't there be a movie about, or infinite numbers of movies about people who are higher support needs and haven't yet found a way to reliably communicate. Like, why is that wrong? And I thought that was kind of, that, that kind of irked me about the response on Twitter too, because a lot of people were like, oh, again, it's this trope and blah, blah, blah. But like, these people do exist. <laughs> like, maybe not quite in the way that Sia's trying to portray it, but I feel like her baseline for reality is, is different than most people said. <laughs> it's kind of an imagination world. That's just my impression. Of course, that's not to say that necessarily it's a great idea to report to the world that like autistic people, if they can't speak or whatever, that they're just like, oh, I just love everything. It's so wonderful. Like, you know what I mean? Just because we might look up and around doesn't necessarily mean we're like imagining a magical like musical set or something. Like, you know, <laughs> We get it. Does, do you guys get it? I get it. We get it. Okay. Back to more Twitter stuff. Someone says that doesn't work. Asking people who aren't autistic about autism doesn't make your rep good. Talking about instead of with us and having others program us is not okay ever. And then Sia says, I had two people on the spectrum advising me at all times. Now that's actually kind of important information. Of course, this wasn't good enough for Twitter and they're just like, oh my gosh, it was only two people. But I mean, that's a, probably a lot better than a lot of movies. Again, you know, it's not the perfect standard, but I do appreciate that there were autistic people with her advising her about her movie often. And I, I can respect that. I can respect someone who is clearly trying. They clearly didn't do well enough and they have some misguided ideals. <laughs> but I don't know, I feel like that kind of shows that she she was trying. Another person says it's a mighty shame that someone with such a colossal platform is using it to exclude disabled and neurodiverse actors from their own narratives. I've been a longtime fan of your work, so this is really disappointing. Sia says, I cast 13 neuroatypical people, three trans folk, and not as effing prostitutes or drug addicts, but as doctors, nurses, and singers. Effing sad, nobody's even seen the dang movie. My heart has always been in the right place. Again, this is kind of more information from Sia that kind of helps maybe fill out what's happening a little more because initially it was just kind of like, wow, you made a really tropey movie, didn't cast an autistic person, and didn't involve the autistic community, you suck. But I don't think that's really the full story here. Clearly she had people that she had advising her who were autistic. She went out of her way to cast neuroatypical people and trans people and put them in roles that maybe 
they don't always get when they are given roles specifically based on these kind of identities. So I, I feel like, mm, I don't know, I'm starting to feel a lot more empathy for Sia in this situation. Another person says, did you do any research or consult the community at all? It's very condescending to say it would be cruel to consult a disabled actor really quick point there. I don't think that's what she meant because I initially got upset with what she was saying. She didn't say it was cruel to consult a disabled actor. She was saying it would be cruel to put a very high support needs non-speaker in a grueling role as a main character in a movie on a tight schedule. So just saying for accuracy's sake, that's what actually was said, but whatever. Sia says, duh, I spent three effing years researching. I think that's why I'm so effing bummed. Now, to be fair, I don't think she actually... <laughs> the impression of if I said I have spent three years researching this, I imagine in my head personally, someone who has dedicated a good portion of their life every day for three years to researching something, and I can confidently say that is not what happened, because she would be aware of this. This would not... This backlash would not surprise her over three years of researching it especially if she's someone who casts people from Twitter. If you got to know the autism community on Twitter, it took me maybe a year to figure out how easily offended everyone is over everything, and you can't say certain things or else apparently the autism overlords will come and murder you. I don't know, that's a little bit extreme and maybe a little petty. So I did think that was kind of a little sketch, like you didn't really spend three years researching. <laughs> You didn't. But she, I, I guess the movie was in production or something for three years. This was a whole thing she talked about in her interview where like, I guess they had basically completed the movie and it was kind of sitting for review and she called it mediocre and someone who had watched it called it mediocre and then she changed the lyrics and the songs and then she thought it was like much better because it went along with the storyline or something. So there has been a long amount of time going on with this movie, but I wouldn't say that that was like all dedicated to researching about autism and autistic people. Another person says, incredibly disappointing to see yet another misrepresentation of neurodivergent people. What an incredibly wasted opportunity to showcase autistic talent and share an authentic story from that community. We'll not be watching this. Hashtag we shall not be removed. Hashtag nothing about us without us. Sia says, I'm so confused. The character is based completely on my neuroatypical friend. He found it too stressful being nonverbal, and I made this movie with nothing but love for him and his mother. And this is also something she had mentioned in that interview. She said that she had Maddie learn all of her friend's tics or whatever. So they kind of used him as the model for what Maddie Ziegler should copy to appear autistic for the role. And then in another attempt to defend herself, Sia noted that Autism Speaks backed her movie. Um, so that went really well. However, to clarify, Autism Speaks did not come on board until, as she said, well after the movie was finished, which doesn't honestly surprise me. So no, Autism Speaks was not consulting during this movie. So despite probably listing off a terrible number of things to offend the autistic community, I really think that it is only fair to recognize that there are a lot of things that show that she did try. According to her, she tried to cast someone who was autistic for the main role. Whether you feel that she did a good enough job with her trying or not is up to you. She did have, according to her, two autistic people consulting her throughout the movie. She sent the movie in to what she found to be an authority on the concept of autism to make sure that it was portrayed correctly. She based it off of her friend and all these sorts of things come in together. She made sure, went out of her way to make sure that she cast several neuroatypical people and other groups to be a part of the movie, I think to her, she probably thought this was foolproof. Like, in her head, she probably did all the things that she was supposed to do. In fact, multiple times in the interview, it's very clear that she was afraid of offending people, and yet this crap show happened. So I think part of this really lies on who Sia listened to, specifically whoever it was. <laughs> <laughs> who gave her the magical term special abilities. You did her dirty, <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Again, this goes back to 
the whole language issue and for person first and identity first and blah 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 what some people perceive to be disrespectful to say one way and some people think is respectful blah 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 that whole argument really came into play with that particular aspect i'm kind of conflicted because i do think it would have been great to see an autistic person play an autistic person in this movie however i don't personally think that it's wrong for a neurotypical person to play an autistic person or a non-autistic person to play an autistic person or an autistic person to play a non-autistic person i don't think that is inherently a bad thing as long as the acting and the fit is right and no offense but i just don't think that <laughs> i just don't feel great about maddie's acting here and again this might be that she understands sia's vision better than she understands how to portray the character and that might be a whole weird dynamic because i know the way that sia talks she's kind of like in her own bubble She's in her Hollywood network bubble and her team and Maddie. I, I, it's a weird, it's a weird situation. I don't understand her obsession with Maddie, but whatever. And so she's kind of in that bubble. And I think because of that, when Maddie came to her to say like, hey, I really don't want people to feel like I'm making fun of them. That didn't even click in her mind that Maddie could be seeing something that she doesn't understand because she's in her own little world. And she just thought like good vibes and wonderful stuff and just really didn't understand like even though her intentions i believe were good and i do believe that she wanted it modeled after her friend and to show her friend love and you know the caretakers or caregivers or whatever and all those sorts of things i believe that i just don't know how well executed it was again this is really a lot coming from watching that interview and kind of gaining a more of an understanding of who Sia is and kind of where her mind is about things. So is this movie a wonderful defining work that's going to, you know, represent the autistic community? No, it's it's not. It's not gonna be that. However, is it a movie made to make you feel good and emotional and say nice things about autistic people and the whole thing around that? Yeah, pretty much. Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> I think that this is another thing that also suffers from the pitfalls that a lot of organizations and groups kind of go into, and that being really catering more towards the parents and more towards the caregivers than the autistic people themselves, and the perceptions that the parents and caregivers have of their autistic children then from those of us who can communicate to you what our experiences are like. When Maddie went to study and prepare for the role, again, she went to sources other than the actual autistic individuals who might be able to sit down and talk with her and whatever else. I feel like it was maybe more for like, we love autistic people and we love the caregivers and we think it's wonderful and also like have some respect and have some compassion and yay like that's what this movie is it, as she said it's a love letter to the community and to the caregivers etc not a representation of i think that should be like made clear it's not a representation of it's her in her magical fantastic world trying to say like i love you guys her problem was that she said she chose to lovingly represent the community and I don't think that it that's accurate. I don't think she's representing the community well uh, and I don't know that that was necessarily 100% her goal. I think her goal again was to make people feel a certain way. So yeah, when I first found out about this, I was probably much more on the kind of Twitter autistic advocate side <laughs> of this and obviously Sia did not handle backlash well. I don't think some of her responses were appropriate or mature or professional in any way. But I think after like really looking into this, I have a lot more compassion for her. I don't, I don't, I, I don't plan on watching it. It's just not my jam. I don't like musicals. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't. And I also don't like bright colors and fantastical things and that's very much what she is and very much what this movie's going to be. In that respect, I don't think it's going to be horribly damaging to the autistic community like some people are trying to say. While sure she, she does appear to want to share the message like just because someone doesn't speak doesn't mean they don't understand you. I 
I don't think there's a whole lot about this that people are going to take super seriously, super to heart because of the nature of the movie. It's like an over-the-top musical, fantastical, blah blah blah. Like, I don't feel like it's a movie that is made to make people feel like they're seeing an accurate representation. And for that reason, I don't think it's this horrible, awful thing that people are, really need to be as outraged as they are. But I can understand the disappointment. I can. However, there are some autistic creators out here. I believe Indie Andy specifically had said he would be willing to watch it if you guys wanted a review of the actual movie when it actually comes out. I doubt I'll watch it, so you should probably check out him or any of the other creators who plan on watching it and then reviewing it and sharing their thoughts because of, of course that will give a better picture. Maybe it's not as bad as the trailer made it look in regard to Maddie's acting. <laughs> so with this huge conversation, I have some questions for you all. Is it ever okay for different neurotypes or neurologies or whatever to play roles that aren't the same as theirs. For example, an autistic person playing a non-autistic role or a non-autistic person playing an autistic role. Are all of the pushbacks and I guess hate and anger and you know outrage online really a realistic criticism or are these, some of these at least, idealistic forms of you know what people would want but might not realistically work in reality with a movie, the budget, and timeline, etc. Or do you think that this is absolutely completely reasonable what the autistic community specifically like on Twitter has been saying? Should every movie regarding autism be something that dispels autism myths or is what the autistic community and autistic advocates feel is the most accurate possible way of portraying autism. Should these things be the focus of every movie that includes autism or talks about autism or a story of people with an autistic character? Are any movies in general, do they tend to be as accurate as the people, for example, on Twitter have expressed a desire for? Do you think that Maddie Ziegler being already well-known and very famous non-autistic person made her more open or easier to send hate or backlash to. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you want to answer any of those random questions that I had for you or just random thoughts about this whole situation, whatever else. Let's have a conversation. Please keep it respectful. If you enjoy autism-related content from me, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I upload to this channel every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you to everyone who supports me here on YouTube as YouTube members, my patrons over on Patreon, and a special thank you to my Spaz Tier patron, Philip Noah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!